Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video. I am excited to share today's video with you because I am cooking four freezer meals by the Pioneer Woman. Now, these recipes are from the episode Double Dinners and I will link the show page as well as all the recipes down below so you guys can try them out if you'd like. So not only am I going to be cooking these recipes in this video, but I'm also going to be sharing with you our reactions, so how we liked them, which is important so that you guys know whether you want to make them or not. So. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that I'm going to work on is this nacho cheese casserole. So for this recipe, you'll start out by sauteing some ground beef. I just have it in a large Dutch oven here because this does make quite a bit of sauce. So to the ground beef while it was sauteing, I added some garlic paste, mm -hmm. some salt and pepper, and then the recipe calls for diced onion, but my kids aren't wild about that. And so I like to use just the dried minced onion that you can get in the spice aisle. So I'm going to use also my Pampered Chef uh, mix and chop to make sure that I mix the ground beef up and get it nice and brown on all sides. I will link that down below if you guys are interested in buying one on Amazon. So this also uh, calls for a enchilada type sauce to be mixed with the ground beef and then you'll layer it in the casserole dish with Doritos, crushed Doritos. So I'm making a roux in the saucepan and then adding some chicken broth and some cumin and then I will just let that simmer until it is thickened. So the premise of these recipes is to cook once and eat twice. So the recipes themselves uh, have enough ingredients to make like basically a double batch. So essentially you are making like two casseroles, you'll have one for dinner on this day and then freeze the other one for later use. So what you saw me doing there was adding some um, canned enchilada sauce to that chicken broth mixture. So I'm just making sure that the ground beef is nice and browned on all sides. And then once the enchilada sauce has had a little bit of time to thicken, I'm stirring that into the ground beef. Now, I'm not sure if it was meant to be like this. Um, I did follow the recipe for the amounts, but I feel like the sauce was a little bit runny. Um, and you'll see later how that turns out. But I did try to simmer it a little bit more and thicken it up a little bit. So right now I'm just making one casserole. Um, I cut the recipe in half because I wasn't sure if we were going to like it. But if you're making this as intended, you would obviously be putting together two casseroles right now, one to bake for dinner and then the other to put in the freezer. So on the bottom of that freezer pan, you saw me just crushing up some nacho cheese Doritos. I layered in some of the meat sauce and some shredded cheese and then just repeat more chips more meat sauce more cheese once this is complete you can cover it with foil cover them both with foil and then you'll put one in the oven and one in the freezer make sure when you're putting it in the freezer that you write on the top like with a sharpie marker what it is um, and how long to cook it So the actual recipes, which I will link down below, do have instructions in them for baking the um, dishes from a frozen state. So just make sure that you write those directions on your casserole dish and follow those when you reheat them if you're reheating them from the freezer. So while that's in the oven, I'm going to uh, just chop up some toppings for this. So um, it essentially kind of turns out like, you know, like a taco bake or like a Dorito flavor taco bake. So I just went with all the traditional taco toppings. So you saw me there chopping up some romaine lettuce. I went ahead and soaked that in cold water and I'm just spinning it dry. I'm using my trusty OXO salad spinner, which I'll link down below. <laughs> if you guys are new here, you don't know that I use this um, all the time for <laughs> washing my lettuce and other produce, and I love it. Um, but you can get those on Amazon. And then I chopped up some tomatoes as well. So here is what the casserole looks like when it came out of the oven. It was nice and hot and bubbly. I did go ahead and sprinkle some extra nacho cheese chips over the top just for some crunch. And then here's a look at my plate. I added some lettuce some tomatoes, some sour cream, and some green onions. You could definitely add like pico de gallo or cilantro if you wanted. All right, 
here's the verdict on the nacho cheese casserole. Hard pass on that one. <laughs> Everyone ate it with the caveat and the promise that I would never again make it like that. I would say that I think the concept is really good, but layering the chips with the meat is really, it makes the chips too soggy. And maybe that wouldn't bother some people, but for me, like if I'm gonna eat chips, I want them to be crunchy. And so if I did make it in the future, I think that I would uncomplicate it like I would just use regular taco meat. I wouldn't go to the trouble of like making the sauce and all that. And then I would probably just put the meat in the dish first, put the cheese on top, and then maybe the chips on top of that so that the chips stayed crunchy. I think then it could be really good. But as the recipe is written, I would say hard pass. Better luck next time, Pioneer Woman. So let's see if we have better luck with this recipe. Okay, this is a slow cooker drip beef recipe. And if you've ever made like Italian beef or sometimes people call it like Mississippi roast, which is actually kind of a different recipe uh, in your crock pot, this is very similar. But uh, even though it's similar, I wanted to give it a try because it had some different ingredients and I just thought um, it was worth it because this is something our family likes anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and chop up an onion. I just sliced that into um, kind of larger slices. And then the recipe also calls for fresh rosemary. Um, so that's something that I've never included in a dish like this before. I thought about using dried rosemary, but I wanted to kind of make the recipe as written um, just to give you guys a good idea of, you know, whether or not to make it or not. So uh, I took the leaves off of the rosemary stems and I'm just using my knife to chop those up rather finally I didn't want huge pieces of rosemary in the dish and I have a rump roast um, a beef rump roast that I'm putting into my slow cooker I'm seasoning it with salt and pepper I was out of kosher salt on this day so I just had to use regular salt um, sprinkling it with the rosemary drizzling it with a little bit of olive oil just to make sure that it doesn't stick to the bottom of the slow cooker seasoning the other side with salt, pepper, and again, more rosemary. So, um, you know, the, the variations that I've made of this before usually use like an Italian dressing packet and then like beef broth, onions, and pepperoncini. So like I said, this recipe is really simple or not really simple, really similar, um, just kind of a variation with the fresh rosemary. So I'm putting the um, sliced onions on the top and then I have a jar of pepperoncini. You could either use the whole or the sliced ones, whichever you prefer. Um, so I'm scooping most of those out and putting them on top of the roast. I wanted to save, usually I would use the whole jar, but I wanted to save some for something else that I was making. And then uh, lastly, I'm just gonna pour some beef broth in it. So then that's done. This is a super, uh, quick prep definitely doesn't take too long and you can put this in the slow cooker like before you go to work and it'll be done when you get home so the freezer meal component of this dish actually comes in after you cook it so you can see here that it's been cooking all day long um, there will be enough meat in here for us to eat once and save the rest for later so I just removed the roast from the crock pot and I'm letting that kind of rest in a casserole dish uh, before I shred it just to let it cool off a little bit and then I will also strain off um, those big chunks of pepperoncini and onion before I put the shredded beef uh, back into the crock pot. So I have this fat separator that um, I know I've talked about before on my channel, but if you guys don't have one and you'd like one, I'll link it down below. They are available on Amazon and they come in handy, especially for stuff like this, where you're trying to strain the broth from a roast or a stock and you wanna let the fat kind of like rise to the top and just put the broth back in with the meat. So super handy in that aspect um, the other thing i wanted to mention that i don't think i mentioned before is the actual original recipe calls for car um, caramelizing the onions in a skillet and then adding them to the sandwiches um, we're just not big fans of that probably adam would be the only one that would like them that way so i just went ahead and put the onions in 
um, with with the beef like you saw me doing so uh, I took that shredded beef put it back into the crock pot with the uh, broth and then that will just sit and keep warm until we're ready to eat so to prepare this I am getting a baking sheet with some parchment paper ready and I have some um, deli rolls that I got from Aldi you can get any kind that you wanted I am splitting them open and spreading them with some softened butter and then I will toast these in the oven just a little bit um, toasting them uh, helps keep them helps keep the rolls crisp while you add the beef and as you can see here take it from me keep an eye on your rolls because they will <laughs> they will burn super quickly uh, I did have some extras that I was able to um, toast up so we weren't without bread but yes make sure you keep a close eye on those so once those are nicely toasted and not burnt i used a slotted spoon to take some of the beef out of the slow cooker i tried to drain off as much of the broth as i could so that i wouldn't get the rolls soggy and i'm just piling some of the meat on there and then i will also add some um, provolone cheese you could also at this point add more like sliced pepperoncini if you wanted to or you could add pepper jack cheese or mozzarella cheese um, any kind of cheese that you like will basically work. Okay, so I just popped those back into the oven until the cheese melted and they are ready to go. So um, you can also serve these with some additional broth if you like to like dip your sandwiches in that. So with the remainder of the shredded beef, now this is what you'll freeze. So this contraption that you see here is actually a Ziploc bag holder. You can get these on Amazon. I'll link them down below, but they are super handy for freezer meals. And I would definitely recommend them if you're, especially if you're doing like large, you know, volume batches of freezer cooking or just in general, they're super helpful. So um, I'm using just a regular size freezer bag, pouring the broth in with the meat, and I will go ahead and stick this in the freezer. And then when we go to eat it again, all we need is some fresh rolls and cheese. Okay, so for the slow cooker drip beef sandwiches, okay, this one was a total winner. We all loved it. And honestly, I liked it better than my original recipe for Italian beef, which calls for like the dry packet of Italian dressing, but the fresh rosemary was much better. It was less salty. It was just, it was totally delicious. So this is definitely a keeper, and I would totally recommend making this recipe ASAP. Okay, so next I'm gonna show you a ranch pizza pie. Now this is probably the recipe that I was the most curious about just because I don't think I've ever really made something quite like this before. So essentially it's kind of like a big pizza pocket, so super kid friendly. So in a skillet, I am adding one pound of ground beef to saute up. Um, I just wanna mention too that the original recipe called for ground sausage. Uh, I went ahead and just used ground beef and it worked fine. We have a ton of ground beef in our freezer and so that's why I chose to do that so that I didn't have you know the extra expense at the grocery store. So to the ground beef, I'm seasoning it with some Italian seasoning, um, some salt, some pepper, some onion flakes, and some garlic. And you just wanna saute this until it is nice and brown. I did go ahead and drain this um, after it was done because I wanted to make sure that in my pizza pocket, I didn't have a lot of extra grease. I do not normally always drain my ground beef because we get our beef from a local farmer and it's actually really, really lean. But for this purpose, and especially if you're using like the ground sausage, I would definitely recommend draining it on paper towels so it doesn't get your, um, you know, pizza pie super greasy. So I just had a paper plate that I put a paper towel on and I'm using a slotted spoon to take that out of the skillet and put it on the paper towel um, to make sure that it's dry. So to assemble this, you'll need a box of puff pastry. This comes with two sheets of puff pastry in it. Um, the, the recipe as written calls for four sheets of puff pastry, which I think is rather large. If you have a large family, I think that's fine. For four of us, this was a little much for one meal. Um, and I don't know how it would reheat because obviously puff pastry is best when 
it's eaten, you know, the day, the day that you make it. So I just rolled out one sheet of puff pastry. Um, I put some flour down, flour on my rolling pin, and just rolled that out to basically the size of the baking tray that I'm using. I put on two cups of shredded Monterey Jack cheese, and then I'm going to layer on my ground beef, making sure that I leave a layer, or, or I'm sorry, like a border around the outside of um, the pizza pie because that is going to you're going to need that when you crimp your edges later So I'm also using turkey pepperoni um, for this just because I wanted to cut down on the grease So I'm just layering those on top of the uh, ground meat The recipe also called for sliced mozzarella, but I couldn't find that in my grocery store So I just went ahead and used sliced provolone cheese and it turned out great. So turned out great so <laughs> if I can talk here, uh, for the top crust, basically you just do the same thing. You uh, roll it out with a rolling pin and some flour, and then go ahead and just lay it over the top after you um, put some egg wash on the outside of, of that border of the crust. So I just beat together one egg and a little bit of water, and I'm using a pastry brush to brush that along the outside. Um, and then when you put your puff pastry layer on top, you'll then use a fork to kind of crimp the edges. This was a little bit difficult to do after I had it on the baking sheet, because you can see that lip, you know, of the baking sheet is there, which made it a little bit difficult. And this probably wasn't as pretty as it could have been, but whatever, it still, it still tasted good. So just using a fork to get that crimped. And then once I do that, I will cut some um, vent holes in the top. This is important so that, you know, the, the pie doesn't like puff up and try to explode in the oven. So I just cut three kind of vent holes with a paring knife. And this is the point where you freeze this. So you uh, wrap it in plastic first and then in foil, and then you can pop it in the freezer. Make sure you write your directions on it. Um, there are directions included with the original recipe so that when you take it out and go to make it later like this, you'll know how to cook it. So uh, I am brushing the top with some egg wash. Again, just one egg um, beaten with a little bit of water using a pastry brush to this time brush the whole thing because you obviously want the whole um, pizza pie to brown. So I'm just popping that in the oven and baking it at 425. I set the timer for 40 minutes. I think I actually ended up turning it down part of the way through because I wanted it to cook through and I wanted to make sure that the outside didn't burn. But this is what it looks like when it comes out nice and beautiful. Make sure that you let it rest for a little bit before you cut it to kind of prevent all of that cheese from leaking out. Um, I just use a pizza cutter to cut this into squares and that is what they look like. Um, so super kid friendly. We went ahead and served this with some green beans and then I would also recommend serving it with some pizza sauce to uh, dip it in. So verdict on the ranch pizza pie. Um, it was actually really good we thought. I would definitely make it again but I would probably make a few changes. So the recipe as written I don't know, I can't remember how many it serves, but that whole sheet pan was definitely way more than we needed for a family of four. I would even say that you could cut that in half and just use one sheet of puff pastry and then like fold it over and you know make your um, pizza pie out of that. And then you know you could obviously freeze the other one as intended as a freezer meal. So um, the other thing is that the puff pastry is really rich and buttery. And so I think if I made it again, like for Adam and I, I would definitely add some veggies. Um, I know that the recipe called for like peppers and onions and I didn't choose to add those because the kids probably wouldn't have really liked that. But if I did it again, I would probably add like peppers or olives or mushrooms, just something to kind of cut like the richness of the meat and the cheese and the puff pastry. But other than that, it was really good. Um, Kira didn't like it as much as Connor did, um, but Adam and I both liked it and I served it with some pizza sauce. So I would say overall thumbs up would make again with those modifications. So recipe number four and the last recipe I'm going to show you is the shrimp scampi stuffed shells. So for this, you will need some dried, the large um, pasta shells, which I'm going to boil in some salted water. Uh, make sure that you don't 
cook these all the way. Whenever I make like a lasagna or a stuffed pasta, I always just kind of partially cook the pasta because when you bake it in the oven, it's going to soak up whatever sauce you have on it and cook it the rest of the way. So um, I boiled these until they were just about done or like al dente. And then I covered a baking sheet with a piece of foil and some cooking spray. I'm scooping these out and putting them on there. The purpose of this is just to let them cool without sticking to one another. So you can just leave that on the counter and let them cool until they're cool enough to handle. So what you see here is some shrimp that I thawed out in cold water and I put it in a casserole dish just with some paper towels so I could dry the shrimp off. This shrimp came um, peeled and deveined so all I had to do once I thawed it out was to take the tails off. So that's what you see me doing here, just kind of pinching the tails off, throwing those in the garbage and then I am um, putting them on a cutting board because you're going to need to chop this up just a little bit before you put it into your stuffed shells. As I'm watching this back and putting my shrimp tails in the garbage, I'm thinking that someone's probably going to tell me that I should have saved <laughs> I should have saved those to make seafood stock with, which I've never made seafood stock before, so it's not even something that I've thought about before, but in the future maybe I'll do that. I don't know. It's it's funny the comments that um, people leave. And yes, I try to reduce food waste as much as I can, but I'm definitely not perfect. So, uh, okay, so once the shrimp is uh, uh, t d what do you call it? Detailed. The tails are taken off. It's definitely not detailed. That's not, that's not even a, a correct word, but <laughs> once the tails are all taken off, I just use my chef's knife to chop these up. I'll also link the chef's knife I have, um, down below. You can get them on Amazon. It's a nice quality chef's knife. And so it is a little bit of an investment. Um, but if you cook a lot like me, it's definitely something that you'll use every day of your life and it's totally worth it. The original recipe called for chopped onion, but I had a shallot in the fridge that I needed to use up. And so that is what I um, opted to use and it worked just fine. I'm just mincing that finely. And then I'm also going to mince up a few cloves of garlic. So just smashing those with the side of my knife, um, getting the peel off and then uh, mincing those up to add to the shrimp mixture. I have some olive oil heating up in a skillet over about medium heat. Uh, you can add the shallots or onions and the garlic to that along with a little bit of red pepper flake and then just saute those until they're lightly brown. Make sure that you keep an eye on them so they don't burn and then you're going to add your shrimp and cook that through. So um, essentially what you're doing is like sauteing the shrimp you're going to add like um, white wine and lemon juice. And then later we'll make the cheese mixture. And once the shrimp is cool, um, you can stir that into like your ricotta cheese mixture. So I'm adding a little bit of salt and pepper, going to let those saute until the shrimp are almost cooked through. And then at the end, you add um, the juice of half a lemon and some white, just a splash of white wine. Um, I just let that cook until some of the wine and lemon juice was cooked off and then turned off the heat and let that sit to cool. So in my bowl for the cheese filling, I have a little bit of cream cheese and one egg yolk. I'm going to stir in some ricotta cheese and some Parmesan cheese, some pepper, some salt, and uh, uh, as well as a little bit of fresh chopped flat leaf parsley. If you don't have this, you could use dried parsley too. I'm sure that would work just fine. And then I'm just stirring the mixture really well to make sure that I get um, that ricotta cheese incorporated in with the cream cheese and the egg. The shrimp has cooled off, so I'm adding that as well to the bowl. I tried to make sure that I didn't add a lot of the liquid that was left in the pan because I didn't want this to be um, too soupy. So stirring the shrimp in with the cheese mixture, and then while that is cooling in the fridge for a little bit, I put it, I put it in the fridge just to let it kind of set up. I'm going to make um, the sauce that goes over the shells. So this isn't exactly like an Alfredo sauce. It looks like an Alfredo sauce, but there's no Parmesan cheese in it. Either way, it's really delicious. You just make a roux in your um, pan with some um, garlic paste and then add one cup of heavy cream and two cups of milk. And then just let that kind of simmer over medium low heat until it thickens to kind of like the texture of an Alfredo sauce. Um, make sure that you taste it when it's done cooking to see if it needs more seasoning. And then you also add some freshly chopped parsley 
in at the end as well. Just keep, make sure that you whisk it continuously. Otherwise you risk it kind of like scalding at the bottom of the pan. I did think it needed a little bit more salt and pepper. So I went ahead and added that. Okay, so to assemble this, I'm using one of my regular size freezer pans. Um, I don't think I mentioned I get these at Costco if you guys are wondering where I get them at. And then I'm using a smaller glass dish. What I wanted to do was just kind of make one batch of this for the freezer. And then I went ahead and left four of the stuffed shells out and cooked them that day because I obviously wanted to taste test them for you guys and let you know how I liked them. Um, for the other casserole dish, I put it in the freezer and I actually ended up giving this to Adam's parents because his mom um, just had knee surgery a few weeks ago. And <laughs> she was telling me the other day about how um, my father-in-law has been cooking for her and making like hot dogs all the time or getting fast food and she wanted some like real <laughs> home cooked food and she loves seafood so I thought she would like this a lot. To assemble these it's pretty simple you just use a spoon to stuff the shells with the cheese and shrimp mixture. Um, this kind of turns out like a cross between like a shrimp scampi and a shrimp alfredo, um, which is really good. But once the, the shells are stuffed, then you will put the rest of the sauce over the top. If I didn't mention it before, you do put also a cup of sauce in the bottom so those shells don't stick to the bottom of the pan. So just pouring the rest of that sauce over the shrimp. And then I'm going to sprinkle on top just some shredded mozzarella cheese. That one pan that I'm putting in the oven, I went ahead and got that in there for this pan just sprinkling the mozzarella cheese on top um, covering with cover it I can't even talk covering it with some foil <laughs> I like to cover it with a double layer of foil so on the the outer layer I'm just using a sharpie to write the instructions on there and then I will get that into the freezer All right, so here's just a look at the smaller casserole dish that was in there. Um, I cooked these at 375 for about 25 to 30 minutes. And here is what they look like when they're done. Uh, I let those rest on the counter before I All tried right. them. <clears throat> Shrimp scampi stuffed shells. If you make one thing from this video, make it those because these were so good. Uh, it tasted like a cross between shrimp scampi and shrimp alfredo. Seriously, like one of the best things I've ever eaten. So uh, I think these and the, the drip beef sandwiches were the best two recipes out of these particular uh, Pioneer Woman freezer meals. Okay, so that brings us to the end of our video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing all of these different freezer meals. If you're planning on trying one or two or three or four, uh, let me know which ones you guys want to try. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.